beginning to get very tired of sitting by her sister on the bank and having nothing to do. Once or twice she peeped into the book her sister was reading, but it had no pictures or conversations in it. And what is the use of a book? thought Alice, without pictures or conversations. So she was considering in her own mind, as well as she could, what was getting toward evening and the hot day had made her sleepy. What shapes the stars appearing above could be, and what they would talk about if they could, when suddenly a white rabbit with pink eyes ran close by her. There was nothing so remarkable in that, nor did Alice think it so very much out of the way to hear the rabbit say to itself, Oh dear, oh dear, I shall be too late. But when the rabbit actually took a watch out of its waistcoat pocket and looked at it and then hurried on, Alice started to her feet. For it flashed across her mind that she had never before seen a rabbit with either a waistcoat pocket or a watch to take out of it. And burning with curiosity, she ran across the field after it and was just in time to see it pop down a large rabbit hole under the hedge. In another moment, down went Alice after it, never once considering that she might not be able to get back out. The rabbit hole went straight on like a tunnel for some way, and then dipped suddenly down so sudden that Alice had not a moment to think about stopping herself before she found that she was falling down what seemed to be some sort of vortex. Either the whirlpool was very large or she was being pulled into a slow orbit, for she had plenty of time as she went down to look about, to wonder what was going to happen next, and to observe everything that was going on around her. First, Alice tried to look down and make out what she was being drawn into, but it was too dark to see anything. And then she looked further around the arms of the whirlpool and noticed a curious thing. The twinklings that stood out so brightly from the black looked a bit like shovels filled with books and nooks and all sorts of wonderful happenings, for all the great stories she knew were coming to life about her. It was a beautiful place to be, no doubt, but frightening too. Alice had read many books with both pictures and conversations, and gasped when she recognised Odysseus on his ship steering towards Scylla with her twelve legs all writhing, dangling down, and six long swaying necks, a hideous head on each, each head barred with triple rows of fangs, thick set, packed tight, and armed to the hilt with black death. Thankfully for Alice, the vortex turned her around before she could see Scylla take the heads of Odysseus' six best men. To her right, Alice saw another ship caught in the most terrible hurricane that ever came out of the heavens. Images of debris flying everywhere and men going mad as they drowned flickered at the sides of her vision. But Alice's gaze was drawn to one man as his black hair turned to white and he lashed himself to a barrel before disappearing. Not into the maelstrom like the others, but into thin air, escaping as if by magic. Alice was tumbled about again and again and again and for a moment saw all the points of light become the ancient, dreamless kraken, arising from the slumbering black. For something with such a fearsome description seemed to Alice to be almost gentle. Certainly far more gentle than she was each morning when that fearsome diner woke her up with a rough cat tongue anyway. As the kraken dissolved back into the black, Alice noticed a house pulled from its foundations and spinning out of control. She knew that house and longed to reach inside. Dorothy and Toto would be such marvellous friends and what a brilliant thing it would be to visit Oz. Alice tried clicking her heels together thrice, but unfortunately it didn't work and she just tumbled further into the whirlpool. The pinpoints of light formed into another ship before Alice's eyes. She was getting a mite bored with the abundance of ships when a giant beast pushed up from underneath it. Alice saw that it was connected to the ship somehow, and as it fell, the ship went with it. Down, 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 would the fall never come to an end? I wonder how many miles I've fallen by this time, Alice said aloud. I must be getting somewhere near the centre of the universe. Down, 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 watching all the stories rush past as gravity played its part and then was followed by the great black hole at the heart of the whirlpool.